I'm Dr. Wershba, and I'll be talking about slipped capital femoral epiphysis, also known as SCIFI. The goal of this presentation is to learn about slipped capital femoral epiphysis, also referred to as SCIFI. In order to accomplish this, you will learn how to evaluate for SCIFI and how to recognize a typical presentation. Identifying risk factors for SCIFI and the average age at presentation will aid in this goal. Finally, the appropriate management and treatment and the outcome of SCIFI will be discussed. The presentation is divided into the following. Definition of SCIFI, clinical manifestations, epidemiology, evaluation and diagnosis, management, and finally, outcomes and complications. So what is SCIFI? Slipped capital femoral epiphysis is displacement of the capital femoral epiphysis from the femoral neck through the physio plate. A diagram is provided to help visualize this definition. The top diagram shows a normal or stable hip, and the picture below demonstrates the slippage of the capital femoral epiphysis that causes the instability. SCIFI usually occurs in adolescence, in males more so than in females, and especially in children with delayed sexual and skeletal maturation. The mean age of presentation is 12 years in females and 13 and a half years in males. However, this could also occur in younger children depending on risk factors, such as obesity. It is unilateral about 75% of the time, but can be bilateral. And as mentioned, obesity is a significant risk factor. While SCIFI often occurs as a primary condition, it can be associated with systemic disorders, such as hypothyroidism, which is useful to remember if a child presents outside of the normal age range. The presentation of SCIFI varies. There is a chronic form and an acute form, and the severity ranges from mild to severe. Chronic SCIFI is most common and is characterized by symptoms of more than three weeks duration, usually without a recognized trigger. Symptoms include aching groin and pain in the hip, thigh, or knee, accompanied by a limp. Acute SCIFI is defined as symptoms of less than three weeks duration and is characterized by severe hip pain and inability to walk. Acute SCIFI is often triggered by trauma. The differentiation between mild and severe depends on the degree of displacement of the epiphysis in relation to the diameter of the femoral neck. Mild means that about one-third of the femoral head slips off the thigh bone. Severe is when more than half of the femoral head slips off the thigh bone. Physical exam findings include the following. The children most commonly afflicted with SCIFI are obese adolescent males, although it does occur in non-obese patients as well. SCIFI is usually unilateral and presents as a patient with a limp and inability to bear weight on the affected side. In bilateral presentation, the patient demonstrates a waddling gait as it is difficult to bear weight on either leg. In the supine position or when the patient is sitting, the examiner will find the affected leg flexed at the knee and held in an externally rotated position to minimize pain. Therefore, the affected leg appears shorter than the unaffected leg. Range of motion of the hip is painful. However, sometimes the pain will be referred to the knee. This is an important pearl because the clinician should always have skiffy on the differential in an adolescent, especially an obese adolescent, who presents complaining of knee pain. The evaluation of SCIFI requires a bilateral two-view hip and pelvis or an anterior, posterior, and frog lateral radiograph to assess for slippage of the femoral head on the proximal femur posteriorly and inferiorly. Often, the analogy of a scoop of ice cream slipping off a cone is used to describe the appearance of the femoral capital epiphysis slipping off the femoral neck. The anterior posterior, or AP view, reveals widening and irregularity of the growth plate. The frog leg view is the most sensitive for diagnosing SCIFI. The Klein's line is a theoretical line along the axis of the femoral neck 
which should touch or intersect the femoral head, but it does not do so in Skiffy, as the following diagram illustrates. So the diagram on the left shows Klein's line drawn on an AP view of the pelvis, and notice that the left hip has Skiffy, the line does not intersect the femoral head, and the diagram on the right shows Klein's line drawn on an illustration of the hip. Once again, notice that diagram B represents Skiffy, as the line does not intersect the femoral head. So, prompt recognition is essential, as delayed diagnosis can worsen prognosis. Once Skiffy is suspected, the patient should be kept from bearing weight to avoid further slippage. Immediate referral to an orthopedic surgeon is required, since treatment is surgical, involving stabilization of the slip with the screw placed in the center of the epiphysis, referred to as pinning in situ. One should never manipulate the hip affected by Skiffy, as this can result in worsened outcome for the patient. The outcome of Skiffy is related to the severity of the slip. Attempting relocation can lead to avascular necrosis due to disruption of the blood supply to the bone, which leads to cellular death and ischemic necrosis. Pinning, while part of the management, can lead to destruction of the cartilage overlying the femoral head. If the patient has unilateral skiffy, serial x-rays are recommended to screen for involvement of the opposite side. Patients with skiffy have an increased risk for developing osteoarthritis in the affected hip over time. In summary, skiffy is a condition that usually occurs in adolescence and is characterized by the posterior and inferior displacement of the femoral head from the femur through the growth plate. Obesity is a risk factor. Recognizing the classic presentation of an altered gait and inability to bear weight on one or both lower extremities is essential. If these signs are present, the patient should have an urgent two-view, anterior-posterior, and frog lateral radiographs of the bilateral hips and pelvis since prompt referral to orthopedics and avoidance of weight bearing are the initial treatment steps to avoid further damage. Even after successful treatment, patients are at risk for developing osteoarthritis in the future.